Ahoy, Minnetonka. I'm David Law, Superintendent of Minnetonka Schools. Thank you for joining us for this episode of our district podcast, Ahoy, Minnetonka. Today, we're talking about one of the amazing student-led organizations at Minnetonka High School. We're here with members of the Student Interact Club and their advisor. Welcome, ladies. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, your grade or your role in school, and, uh, and what you're involved with at the high school. Uh, my name is Campbell. I'm involved in the Interact Club, uh, DECA, and then also Minnetonka Research. Um, I'm a senior this year. I'll be graduating this year and going to University of Iowa next year. Go Hawkeyes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Kira Keegan. I am also a senior. I plan to attend Purdue University next year. Go Boilermakers. Yes, of course. Um, at the high school, I've been involved with a lot of athletics, so the basketball team, the track team, and then also just getting a lot of volunteering in with Interact, and I'm also a writing center coach. Okay. Um, and I'm Rebecca Mark. So I have been at Minnetonka High School as an art teacher for the past four years. I was in the district a little bit here and there before then. Um, and I think it was three years ago that I started working with the Interact Club. Um, and I also do Photo Club and Sports Photo Club. So for the members of the public, what is Interact Club? Yeah, so Interact is the high school division of Rotary. So we do a lot of partnership with the Excelsior Rotary Club and then also a lot of independent volunteer work here at the high school. Recently, our focus has been on trying to combat food inequity within our local community. Um, and part of that is running the local food shelf inside of the high school. How, how did Interact, how did you find out about Interact Club? Yeah, so personally, well, Interact Club started three years ago with Ms. Marks as the um, advisor. There are only a couple kids in the club, but as it's grown, especially uh, our freshman year in 2020, it grew a lot um, with the incorporation of new students. So um, just growing that club. And then also uh, I heard about Interact my sophomore year, and I got really involved in it just because I heard some friends were involved in it. And then that really got me into volunteering and just um, serving the greater good through that. And what made you interested in the Interact Club? Yeah, so I think uh, for a few years prior to when I started, they had another club and they were doing a few different things. Um, and when that advisor stepped down, they just randomly asked if I would be interested. I think it was my second year as a teacher. Um, and I'm so glad that I got involved because it has been just so wonderful to see a group of students who finds problems in the world and then decides, hey, I'm going to do something about it. They're, they're big doers and it's been just awesome to be a part of. Well, that sounds pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. <laughs> well, you mentioned food shelves, and I, I know that I've uh, heard about it and I've seen it, but tell us how you picked that uh, topic and what all the club does to support the food shelf. Yeah, so we worked with ICA Food Shelf to start this food shelf about two years ago now. Um, we worked all throughout the summer with them and Dan Nahr, which was a really big task for us, but um, may, our main goal for the Interact Club uh, in about 2021, 2022 was to um, combat food insecurity. So we thought a great way to do that was the, with the food shelf. So then um, we implemented that food shelf directly inside of Minnetonka High School because with working with ICA, we found out that um, a big barrier to students accessing food shelves is transportation because some students that do use the food shelves don't have cars or don't have a way to get there. So having it directly at the high school for students to use was really convenient for them to just pick it up right after school and then take it home to their families. So that was kind of the main goal behind that. And then we got it up and running um, about two years ago, which was a really big success for us. And that was a huge process of getting that approved, not only within the school, but also um, with other places in the industry. So we toured and partnered with kind of the Greener Good just to understand more how the food industry works, revolving food shelves. And then originally we were very reliant upon food supplies from ICA, kind of just to get our bulk in stock. But since then, we have grown as a club. We've hosted a few successful food drives, one of them gathering, I believe it was over 2,500 pounds of food. Wow. And a lot of that goes into our food shelf, food shelf right here at the high school. Some of that goes to ICA. But we also do a lot of purchasing weekly just to make sure we have the needs to satisfy those weekly orders. So, so tell me um, if a student surfaces at school through a counselor, a social worker, an assistant principal, or a teacher, what's the process from the student presenting a need to connecting with the food shelf and how, how does it all work? Yeah, so a big thing going into this is we wanted to keep it as simple and anonymous as possible just so people don't have to feel any um, like embarrassment or something for reaching out and needing help because that's something that's totally normal and something that people should feel they can do. And so it's a very anonymous process. It's similar to ordering online groceries at a Target or anywhere else. So we have a Google form you can access. You go in, you start by picking your family size, and then you can order from a list of a bunch of foods. We have 
food, we have some clothing articles, we have hygiene products, um, so kind of a wide variety of things. And then you can go in, complete your individual order every week, and then it's identified with a six-digit code that's put on the outside of bags. So there's no name connected to anything and it's all just anonymous. And does it go home in paper bags or backpacks or how does that work? Yeah, so we have an option for families. So at the start of the form, they select either paper bags and boxes or um, backpacks, so normal school backpacks. And we that was really keeping it anonymous as well because we have students carrying around two or three backpacks just normally because of sports or different clubs after school. So just having another backpack doesn't really raise any flags for anybody else. So they feel super comfortable taking it with them on the bus and taking the, that backpack home to their families. And then usually sometimes we have parents ordering from the Google form as well. Um, and they usually request the, uh, the grocery bags as well so they can just come and pick it up in their car, which is super convenient for them. So it's really well. versatile in um, the people we reach and the age, ages we reach as well. And how many students did you say are involved in the food shelf work with Interact? We have a board of about five members that have kind of led this process thus far. But looking to the future, a lot of us are graduating, so we're trying to bring in more underclassmen just to keep this going, because it's up and running now, but this is something that's now a critical part of kind of the community and that families are depending on. So finding a way to keep this going in the future is critical. And so um, it sounds like the students are doing a pretty good job leading it. What role do you play to support the process? Um, so I am the advisor for the club. Um, along with, I also want to shout out our Rotary members. We have Carly Gerlicher, we have Catherine Mallory, and then Deb Baxter um, also help a lot. Um, so I just kind of coordinate some of the efforts. Uh, we get donations from families, and we also get um, donations from the Rotary and other mm -hmm. bigger groups. Um, and we used to just rely, like you guys were saying, on the ICA to get our funds and our food. Um, but now that we have a really large pool of donations, we actually do ordering on a weekly basis. So I will place those orders or go shopping and <laughs> bring the stuff on in and then they come in and pack it. So well, it's a pretty, pretty well-oiled machine at this point. Miss Marks is also kind of what keeps our food shelf <laughs> up and running. She's there every Thursday. She puts the bags out so people can come pick them up. And honestly, we could not do this process without her, so. For sure. So we're almost in the summertime. School won't be in session. What's the plan? Do we, do we have a plan to support food insecurity over the summer, or what happens? Yeah, so the summer, summer months are really our key months where students do need help because they aren't at school and they're not getting that um, lunch that is provided at the school for free. Um, so by keeping the food shelf open, we'll have it open once a week, just at the same as the school year. So we'll have the Interact students or Interact volunteers come in and pack those bags on Wednesdays or Tuesdays, and then the food shelf will be open on Thursdays um, for the students to come, students or families to come pick up the food for them as well. And that the food will be located right at the right at the main entrance, so there it's super convenient for them to swing by and pick it up and then bring it home. So we essentially continue operations. Mm -hmm. If someone over the summer has a life event happens and they need support mm -hmm. and they hadn't been identified during the school year, what would how would they connect over the summer? So the Google form uh, has a QR code mm -hmm. that is sent home in emails. I know Mr. Erickson sends them home. Um, we also do around the school have posters up anywhere where the posters are um, that people can just go up to and scan quick. Uh, there are also stacks of the QR codes with the forms in the counseling office. And then also, if everything else fails, um, my email is rebecca.marks at minnetonkaschools.org. And I would be more than happy to get the code sent out to anybody. Um, there's lots of places to find it, but when in doubt, feel free to send me an email and I'm happy to coordinate that. Awesome. Well, this is a pretty impressive commitment to service. How did you two get involved with the concept of service in, in the first place? Yeah, so for me personally, freshman year coming in, I was kind of new, I was new to high school. It was kind of an intimidating place, so I didn't really get involved. And then my sophomore year, I had some friends that were really involved in the Interact Club, specifically Olivia Donaldson, who was really involved in that, was one of the presidents of the club. So I got involved through her. I applied to be on the board, and I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. And then I ended up getting into the Interact Club board and getting on the board, and that really solidified my relationships there and then also kind of made me really excited to serve the greater good. And then also this new project with the food shelf really was really inspirational for me, just seeing how our community is able to rally around people who are struggling and really help each other out. I would say similar to Campbell, Olivia Donaldson kind of brought me into the mix of this. And I think once I started volunteering and once we started our big project, it kind of 
unlocked a new passion within me just to give back to the community, but also find a way to turn a vision into a reality. I think at the start of this, when we started the project, it was definitely daunting because it's something that hadn't been done within the high school and it was something we wanted to make happen. Um, and it was definitely not a straight path. It was, there was a lot of curves <laughs> and roundabouts that we had to take, but you know, we got to where we are now. And I think there's a sense of pride in knowing that you were able to do something to help others around you and kind of just bring that community back together, like Campbell was saying. Mm -hmm. Are there other service opportunities with Interact? Yeah, of yeah. course. We host weekly, or I guess every other week, but volunteer opportunities. And then also the concert in the Commons with the Rotary is a huge thing that we do. So we have a stand selling pop and water. And the concert in the Commons, if you don't know, is every other week on Wednesday nights. The next one is tomorrow, actually. The, what band is it? The 70s Sunshine Band. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> be there. Awesome. Um, but I'll, it, this is a huge part of our club because a lot of the funds come to us from because it's a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. And then that goes to the weekly purchases that Miss Marks was talking about. So, so get to so, uh, the fun. concert in the Commons all summer long. Yes. Look for the Interact members selling pop and water. Yeah. Say hello mm -hmm. and know that that money comes right back to providing of food. Mm -hmm. of so you're heading off to college. Mm -hmm. Will you keep up with this service opportunity, or how, how will this uh, go forward for both of you? Yeah, so looking to the future, we have some new board members that are just coming up. We're looking to train them in um, with the food shelf, um, getting them up and running and kind of making sure that this food shelf continues to help more and more people as we continue. Um, but looking to my future life, I really do want to get involved with something volunteer-esque at University of Iowa, um, whether that be food insecurity or any other volunteering serving the greater good, because it's just had such a big impact on my life and impact on the people around me as well. Yeah, I would say similar. When I was looking into what university I wanted to attend, that was a component that I considered was what volunteer opportunities are there around there. Most universities have a Rotor Act, which is the college version of Rotary. So I imagine I will partake in that. Um, and then also just getting involved in local food shows because it's something that I really found a passion for and something I want to continue to grow in my future. Well, we are so proud of you for what the work you've done here in Minnetonka and your passion to carry it forward and the legacy. Hopefully that this will continue to serve the students in need in our community. Mm -hmm. It's been great to have all three of you on our uh, program and to tell our community a little bit more about how you, our students are addressing food insecurity. So thank you very much for being here. And thank you for joining us for our district podcast, Ahoy Minnetonka. We'll see you next time.